and best friend and Jeremy's childhood best friend. I want to first start off by thanking you all for coming and making this trip. I know how much everybody being here means to Kimmy and Jeremy. They have not stopped talking about how much it means. When I first started writing this speech, I decided the best place to start would be when Kimmy and I became friends. Now, I don't really have a recollection of Jeremy and I meeting, because I've known him since I was like three years old or something. So Jeremy has always somewhat been a part of my life, but little did I know he would become a major part of my life. <laughs> Can't get rid of him. <laughs> Throughout this process of being made the maid of honor, I've been asked by almost everybody when Kimmy and I first became friends. I don't even have an exact answer for that. Kimmy and I have kind of always known of each other and just been friends through friends. But my earliest memory of Kimmy was her commenting on my Instagram photo very early in high school, saying something along the lines of my eyebrows being perfect. <laughs> <laughs> From that point forward, it was just decided that we were going to be best friends. Yeah. It really was just as simple as that and has continued to be as simple as that. <laughs> Throughout high school, Kimmy and I grew closer and closer, mainly because she didn't have a driver's license, so I was forced <laughs> to spend extra time with her running errands and driving this place. One of my favorite memories with Kimmy is driving Eli around with us. <laughs> Whether we were taking him to Disneyland where he would throw fits about getting on the ride and we have to alternate who would stay with him. That's not fair! <laughs> Yeah, that's 
seeing, seeing my brother with you, and just, it's crazy how happy he is, and he's just grown into such a beautiful man, with you by his side the whole time, and it's amazing. And I just love you so much, I'm keeping it short and sweet. I love you guys, and can we officially welcome to the family.
Then he got in the WWE wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy was a wrestling star. <laughs> I'd, I'd walk by the hallways and I'd see Jeremy standing on top of the uh, credenza, dying in mid-air, landing on a <laughs> stuffed animal, <laughs> and making noise like he was tapping that bad boy out. <laughs> So, I'm not trying to, that, that was a, that's a fact. So, anyway, no, no, that's what you did, that's what I love about you. You did something so different from what I'm used to. I love you. You guys, longevity, lifelong, I love you. Cheers. Um, I want to thank uh, Jeremy's family and Kimmy's family for such a lovely evening. Um, I, let's see, okay, Jeremy, I'm so happy for you, man. I'm so proud of the man you've become, so handsome. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know, I know you do, I know you do. Um, but Kim, well, let's hear a round of applause for Kimmy. So, I didn't formally introduce myself, I'm Jeremy's stepfather, so 
in 2004 is when we met Jeremy. 19 years ago. I didn't do the math till today, even though it's simple. <laughs> you were about this big and nine years old. And you're probably wondering, who the hell is this guy? He did have hair back then, and I was much younger and more fit. But at that time, I knew you were special. Really special. <laughs> You've always been a kind young man, considerate to others. You love your family, and most importantly, you're hilarious. I mean, did you guys see the dance when the guy was Oh, yeah. Classic. Classic jerk. Yeah. 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 I also want to take a special thanks to the Reenies for the, the party that they had in California. That was special to Jody and I to fly in and come see that love and beautiful home and great people and hopefully we get to go fishing together. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, for those that missed Jody's speech at that time, she touched on Jeremy as a quirky dude. And that's not a bad thing. Let's face it, you are. <laughs> so I'm being honest with myself, Jody and I sit there and obsess like any other parent. We always worry about all of our kids, especially Jeremy, just because he's Jeremy. <laughs> Growing up, Jeremy was terrified of elevators. Well, guess where he's staying at tonight? <laughs> the penthouse. <laughs> Dylan touched on the Rainforest Cafe. I don't even know if there is one in Hawaii. No. But the fact is, we're in Hawaii. Jeremy grew up afraid of airplanes. He's here getting married with you, Jimmy. I took something out of my speech, we'll talk later. You <laughs> know. You know. <laughs> Jeremy is afraid of fast cars. Remember our drive down PCH? Tell your friends about that. Oh, he's Remember when you had the Volkswagen, Volkswagen Golf? Yeah. Yep. Fun time. Did you go faster than that day? <laughs> I, went, I was hauling. <laughs> so, Alfredo touched on it. Jeremy grew up loving wrestling. We're still on the quirky piece. <laughs> WWE. Me, growing up as a wrestler, oh, yeah. I was like, all right, you want to wrestle? <laughs> We're going to put you in wrestling. So, oh, yeah. Jody and I showed up to his practice one day, and his coach shows up, a little stocky dude, short, fat, just, you know. He's like, hey, this guy I don't think really likes this. He's not focused, he's distracting the team. <laughs> and he needs to practice a little more at home. Do you remember this? And the coach goes, well, let me show you what he needs to practice on. And this dude whipped me over his shoulder, dropped his, all this weight, and washed my mouth, there's kids in the room, and really hurt my back. <laughs> it still hurts. So the point is, Jeremy is a quirky dude, but we all love him for who he is. That's what makes him who he is. But over the past few years, we've witnessed you grow. You've overcome your fears. You're becoming a man, an overall powerful person, and a great son. We couldn't be more proud of you, and have, and we're proud that you found your love. You've moved out on your own. You moved to Texas, back to California. I'm still not happy about that. <laughs> Almost bought your first house, changed careers, and now you guys are getting married. Kimmy. I'll never forget the first time we met. You sat down at the family dinner table, you engaged with the whole family, and we can tell that you love Jeremy for who he is, a quirky dude. We saw it immediately. We felt that love. You have helped Jeremy grow into his potential and continue to do so. We've enjoyed watching you two become independent and recognize you are the key to Jeremy's heart. 
the foundation you two have built is a testament to the support around you and your family and friends. Your mom and I wish you nothing but the best. Continue to grow, continue to challenge each other, continue to communicate. You heard what he said up there. Come close. Continue to love one another and continue to do you. Marriage is not easy. Trust me. <laughs> challenges. So remember this day, the joy, how beautiful your wife looked walking down the aisle. Support around you, all your friends here. And importantly, the commitment you are making to one another. Stay true to who you are. Navigate life as a team. And if you never need anything, call your mom. <laughs> Both. Anyways, you both are special people, and we wish you nothing but the best. Cheers to Jeremy and Kimmy and Barbara.
first two got together, you guys were walking to hold your hand all awkwardly. It was so cute. You <laughs> we were babies, you know, we we're like sophomores or whatever. I don't know how old we are, but it's just, I feel so welcome here. Your family, Jeremy, and your family, Kimmy, has been very, very, very kind to me. And I, you know, there's no better reason to be in Hawaii for a wedding for you two. It's really amazing. I love you. And short and sweet, love the families, my girlfriend, my best friend. <laughs> I'm Kimberly's older cousin, originally from Lafayette, now Jean. Comment ça va? Buenos noches. Um, yeah, just another like key. That's right. You heard me say comment ça va? Kimberly's family is, well, actually, I was looking at it. I think it's 12.05 right now in Lafayette, Louisiana. That's where her family, the John Lewis's, the Browns, from a little city in Lafayette, Louisiana, and that's where I was raised. Carl, John Lewis, is my older cousin, and who's my dad's first cousin, I was Kimberly's father. Carl was always one of the most creative, fun, loving older cousins, and um, Kimberly and Carl and Sylvia were actually at my wedding when she was the age of eight. And so it's really cool to come here and be in Hawaii. That was the first wedding I went to. That was the first wedding you went to, right? And I had so much fun. It was awesome. I remember the cheese, the Wisconsin cheese. Wisconsin, if you haven't been to Wisconsin. I'm from Louisiana, but I live in Madison, Wisconsin. My wife and I are here. That's right. Yep, yep. And so in Wisconsin, if you ever been to Wisconsin, anybody had cheese curds before? Oh, yeah. Fried cheese curds. Tons of beignets. Beignets from Louisiana. I can make that. So I bring up this little town of Lafayette because it is so special. And one of the coolest things, I'm a social scientist, and I study people, and I such. I study rhythms of social interactions. And one of the cool things is my wife and I get a chance to spend springtime here in Hawaii between here and Maui. And when I, living in the Midwest is tough for me as a man of color sometimes because I feel like the Midwest is a very friendly place, but what the Midwest is missing is a soul and a rhythm. And when I spend time in Hawaii, it doesn't matter if I'm looking at people who are living on the beaches in the blue tents, are the people in the million dollar homes, the city and these people, they have a rhythm. When I met Jeremy for the first time yesterday, yes. I'm like, that dude is cool. <laughs> and he has a rhythm and a soul that is also connected to a place like Lafayette, Louisiana. Kimberly is from a people, guys, if you've never been to Louisiana, not New Orleans, but a place called Lafayette, Louisiana. We're country, we're southern, we're black, we're Creole. Kimmy comes from roots that knows okra, meliton, yeah. crawfish, yeah. neutral rats. In Louisiana, people actually eat neutral rats. It's like a beaver without a tail. It's a, like a rat tail. It's an actual giant rat. And people eat that stuff. We eat everything. Her uncle, Skeety, yep. my grandfather, my uncle Skeety, There'll be times when we were going hunting in the fields in places like Bill Platten and Youngsville. And on the way, he knew the day before he was hunting and he didn't see that rabbit on the side of the road. And he would pick it up and actually say, I'm taking that home with me to clean it and cook it. <laughs> it sounds silly, but when you come from a people that's connected to the soil, Kimberly comes from a people that are so deeply connected to the soil, it's one of the coolest things. And to have a wedding here in Hawaii where the place has soul, and rhythm it is one of the coolest things for me to come here and spend time with Kimberly. She comes from a great people. Jeremy, you are connected to dude. So many cool people with some of the coolest nicknames. And not just the people in flesh, but the people who moved on, like her Uncle Wayne and her grandmother, Rose Brown, who is one of the most coolest faith-based dancing, smiling women, woman, you will ever meet. Storybooks try to capture people like her. And you come from a grandmother like that. And it's pretty cool to know that you have that kind of blood running through you. Yeah. We love you, Kimmy. <laughs> Jeremy, you got soul. I like you, man. <laughs> and I like your family. And I hope that um, I speak on behalf of the Dugas, the Browns, the jean Louis the Alexandras, the Johnsons, from the bayous of Louisiana.
since Jeremy and I have arrived to Hawaii, I keep saying, like, to my close people, I feel like I'm dead. Not in a bad way, but like, I'm dead and this is like a dream. Like, this is my heaven. Never in a million years did I imagine, like, my dream boy in a dream wedding in a, the most beautiful location exactly how I envisioned it, but more. Just a second, Eli. One second. I'm going to try and make this short. No, no. Jeremy and I have been together. This will be our eighth year in December, but Jeremy came into my life at the most perfect time. I wasn't ready, but it was the perfect time. He, he really did. He was very persistent. I wasn't like ready was for like a serious relationship. Like he, like he's my first real boyfriend. I told her basically. I told her to come meet me somewhere so I could basically ask her out on a date. Like, I was like, hey, you want to come down to the pier real quick? Yeah, we'll come down. You're ready to go there. And I was so like, oh, I don't think so. Like I was scared. I was like, I don't want to get too attached. But he was always so persistent and so. So nice, but one thing like Jeremy comes from a really great family. He really does. His family really loves him, and they all love each other. And from the moment, like our first date, Jeremy took me to get Maru sushi. It's on Harbor, and it's not there anymore. But it was on Harbor in Costa Mesa, and Jeremy and his family lived in Costa Mesa down the street. And immediately after he took me out to dinner. He took me to his house like it was nothing. I mean, met, I met his family, I met his parents, and that, to me that was a big deal. Because I come from a very conservative family, like I'm not allowed to talk about boys or, you know, not that I'm not allowed, but it, it, it has to be serious. I'm gonna bring a boy around to my parents. But he just was like, do you wanna come over? Do you wanna come over to my house? Do you wanna come meet my mom? <laughs> And then just from the moment I went over on our first date, like Jody and I instantly, she opened her heart up to me. And just from the beginning, his family has always accepted me like I'm one of their own. And that's something so special to me. I don't have a very big family. It's just myself, my parents, and now my nephew. Um, there's somebody very important and special to me that's not here tonight. Um, she's in heaven, and that's my older sister. And I just, I'm so grateful. Jeremy has such a beautiful relationship with his siblings, and I admire that, and it inspires me. And I'm just so grateful how, thank you. <laughs> I'm just so, I'm so blessed to have his family and his siblings as my siblings now, because that's something that I don't have. But they've always welcomed me and loved me and, you know, have been there for me. And Mimi and Papa, they're my grandparents. They're my Mimi and Papa. They've always been my Mimi and Papa. I don't, my grandparents are all gone in heaven and now. So thank you so much, Mimi and Papa. But I just have such a loving family from both sides, from Jeremy's side, but also my family as well. And I just want to say thank you. We both want to say thank you. <coughs> coming to Hawaii. Like, that's not, not, that's, not that's not an easy thing to do. Well, like, I understand you guys. It's, it's like you guys got to make arrangements and make plans and put aside some money. So I really, really, we both really appreciate all of you for coming down here and supporting us. Like I said earlier, I'm like living in a dream. I'm living my dream life. Everything that I wanted, I have. With Jeremy. So thank you all for coming and, and loving us and supporting us and being there for us and we're just so grateful for you all. It's just a, the greatest blessing to have family and friends that love us all so dearly. And also most importantly, thank you for Kimmy's side of family family for making me feel like like I've always been a part of the family for years. Like nothing has changed. So I love you. I love you, Carl. Love you, Sylvia. Love you guys. You guys.
Like, you guys are truly special in my heart, as you are, of course, my own family, too. But. I know, shocking, right? Crazy. I can't believe it. Cue the music.